In a previous video, we derived a nice identity involving the integral of a function and its inverse. So let's look at the setup. We've got a function from a, b to c, d, where those are both closed intervals. And then f takes a to c and b to d. Furthermore, f is a bijective function and f and f inverse are differentiable. Sometimes this is known as a diffeomorphism. Then we have the integral from a to b of f plus the integral from c to d of f inverse is equal to bd minus ac. So in this video, we wanna apply this to an integral which would maybe be very, very difficult otherwise. And that's this one right here. So we've got the integral from zero to one of e to the x squared plus e minus one times the square root of the natural log of e minus one x plus one and then dx. So looking at this, you should maybe see right away that there should be a hint in order to evaluate it. And that's because each of these functions is a non-elementary function. That is, their antiderivative does not have a closed form, which means if you wanna find the integral of either of these, well, hopefully your interval that you're integrating over is chosen very, very nicely so that it'll work together with some other tricks. Like for example, the integral from zero to infinity of e to the x squared, that's the well-known Gaussian in integral. But here we don't have any of that set up with our interval, so maybe we can use some other trick, namely this one over here. So maybe we'd like to start off by taking this and writing it as the sum of two integrals. So we'll have the integral from zero to one of e to the x squared dx plus e minus one times the integral from zero to one of the square root of the natural log of e minus one times x plus one dx. Now one of these integrals is gonna play the role of this first one, this integral of f, and the other one, the integral of the second one, f inverse. So let's see how we could do that. Maybe we could let f of x equal e to the x squared and see what happens to f inverse and if it could look like this thing right here. So I'll use a standard algorithm from like a pre-calculus class in order to calculate f inverse. So first I'll set y equal to e to the x squared. That makes natural log of y equal to x squared, x equal to the square root of the natural log of y. But renaming, we have f inverse of y equals the square root of the natural log of y. So that's good news. Another thing that we wanna notice is that if we've got f of x equal to e to the x squared, then that means f is taking the interval zero, one, which is our integration domain over here, to the interval one to e, because e to the zero is one, and then e to the one is obviously e. So we have to keep that in mind as well. So now looking at this setup, hopefully we can do something to this second integral so that it looks more like that over there. And in fact, we can, and we can do that with a fairly simple substitution. So let's let y equal to e minus one times x plus one. And notice that that means dy equals e minus one times dx. And so we've got our dy earmuffs around our integrand here, so that's good news. And then we have all of this stuff inside of the natural log, which is inside of the square root, is y. Now, hopefully the bounds of integration have changed appropriately. So notice if x is equal to zero, then that makes y equal to one, because we've got e minus one times zero plus one, that's pretty clear. And then if x equals one, that's gonna make y equal, well, it's e minus one plus one, so y is equal to e. So in other words, our bounds of integration have changed appropriately to apply this identity. So now bringing everything down, we have this is equal to the integral from zero to one of e to the x squared dx plus the integral from one to e of the square root of the natural log of y dy. 
But now we can just rewrite this as the integral from zero to one of f of x dx plus the integral from one to e of f inverse of y dy. Using our notation that we've developed already, using this identity over here, we see that that is e times one minus one times zero. In other words, this is e. And that's a good place to stop.